All right, everybody. Let's start on our backs and have the strap nearby where you can reach it as you're lying down. So find any comfortable position to lie down in. Taking a moment to ground here this Wednesday evening. You might bend the knees apart if you want to start to open your hips. You might just stretch the legs forward like Shavasana. If you feel like your mind is a bit busy right now, you can place your hand on your heart and on your belly to physically turn inward. Do any shifting that you need in order to be still. Perhaps close your eyes as you start to direct more attention to your physical sensations, to your breathing as it is. So I did some research on resilience today and just the the basic definition that I found was the ability to bounce back or rise up from a challenging situation or tragedy then I found some resilience building tools there were like 20 something of them on positivepsychology.com but I want to open up with a quote by a psychiatrist and Holocaust survivor named Viktor Frankl, who wrote Man's Search for Meaning. He said that everything can be taken from a man, but one thing, or human, the last of his or her human freedoms, to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances, to choose one's way. So here are a few of those resilience building tools that I found. One was to recreate the narratives that we tell ourselves. Through that, we can foster a sense of control and how we interpret events by creating a healthier storyline, thus adjusting our paradigm. Another one is to turn personal crises into ways to help others. Third, find meaning or purpose in your environment and experiences. In um, the study of the longest living people throughout the world, they interview the women of Okinawa, Japan, and one of the key reasons for their longevity they found in the Blue Zones was their strong sense of purpose. Number four, have a daily gratitude practice, like a journal. Number five, practice self-compassion. Six, mindfulness, yoga, breathing, meditation. Seven, find something funny every day. Use your sense of humor to build resilience. And number eight, explore the state of flow, often called being in the zone. It's what positive psychologist Mihaly, let's see if I can pronounce his last name, Six Gen Mihaly it described the state of flow as there's this focus that once it becomes intense, it leads you to a sense of ecstasy, a sense of clarity. You know exactly what you want to do from one moment to the other. It leaves you feeling ecstatic, motivated, and fulfilled. This being in the zone of whatever it is that you're doing. So let's practice being in the zone. We'll go more into that later at the end. Let's practice being in our bodies, being in a state of flow as we focus on the breath. So as you lie here, start to deepen your breath, inhaling through your nose, then a long exhale through the mouth. Take that a few times where you can hear the breath become a little louder, even sigh it out if that's useful right now. Roar it out if that helps to just create space for renewal, for rebalance. Now, start to find a flow into the breath where you breathe in as slowly as you breathe out. And now closing the lips, building warmth within the body as you gently narrow the back of your throat, creating a soft whispering sound. So with that sound, you can track the quality of your breath throughout this hour of moving and being still. So continue to tune into that. And now if your knees are bent wide, 
place your hands on your outer thighs and gather your knees towards each other. Stepping your left foot on the mat, bend your right knee into your chest and then grab your strap. Stepping the ball of your right foot into the middle of that strap, extend your right leg up towards the ceiling. Flex your right foot against the strap and use enough slack in it where your shoulders can draw into the earth and away from your neck. Continue to listen to your breathing. Now from here, holding the strap both ends with your right hand, slide your left leg forward straight on the mat and flex your left foot too, placing your left hand just below your hip bone on top of your left thigh. Now feel both of the backs of your hips grounded, keeping them grounded. Begin to turn out your right leg, rotating the thigh bone externally so your knee turns to face the right wall. And then very slowly start to open the right leg as you breathe, taking your time and only going as far as 80%. Just take it a gentle way. You can bend the right knee as much as you need. Just gently beginning to open up into your inner right thigh and the back of your right leg, your hamstring. Finding that range of motion as you ground both hips, both shoulders. Let's take three more deep breaths. In Supta Uttita Hasta Parangushtasana. Supine hand to big toe pose. Now at the end of your exhale, allow your belly to contract a bit as you lift the right leg up to center. Crossing the leg over to your left hand. So hold the strap of the left hand and open the right arm wide, preparing for twists. Now scoot your hips a little closer to the right side of your mat. And now sickle your right foot from the ankle, turn the sole to face the left wall, and then just go one third of the twist and pause. Taking your time to go each third and just observing what sensations may shift. Deep breath. Exhaling through the nose. It might feel good on your neck to turn your head to the right as you ground the right shoulder. Let's take just a couple more deep breaths here. And as you hold the twist longer, think of drawing your right outer hip forward. So it shifts away from your belly and towards your left foot. Just a slight tilt. You might experience a deeper stretch in the lower back. Now at the end of your exhale, slowly lift the right leg up towards the ceiling. Hold the strap with two hands, keep flexing both feet, and then just gently bring the right leg closer to your belly if possible. If there's a lot of resistance in the hamstring, bend your left knee rather than bending your right knee. So try to keep your right leg straight here, taking just a few more breaths. While relaxing your head, relaxing your shoulders on the ground. Then removing the strap, step your right foot on the mat and bend your left knee into your chest. Step the ball of your left foot into the strap and flexing your left foot, straighten the leg upright. Slide your right leg forward as you flex the right foot and place your right hand just below your right frontal hip bone on your thigh. Ground the back of your right hip as well as the left. And as you hold the strap with the left hand, turn out your left leg so your left knee and toes point at the left wall. Then slowly begin to open the left leg, flexing both feet, grounding both hips, grounding both shoulders. Remember, you're not going for a 100% stretch nor even an 80%. Just make it a light waking up of your hamstring and hip. About three more breaths here. Feel the softening of your jaw as you consciously relax other muscles within the face, within the shoulders and neck. At the end of this exhalation, feel the belly engaged, lifting the left leg upright, switch hands holding the strap. Scoot your hips a little closer to the left edge of your mat. Slide your left arm wide out to the left and then sickle your left foot. So from the ankle, turn the sole to face the right wall and then go one third each breath, slowly taking your time to twist to your right. And now turning your head to the left, you can add a neck stretch as well. Going 
only as far into this twist where you can feel your left shoulder stay grounded. As you hold the spinal twist for a few more breaths, direct your attention to your left outer hip, drawing it forward, away from your waist and towards your right foot, feeling that slight tilt. Deep breath in, easy exhale through the nose. Lifting the left leg up, hold the strap again with two hands, keep flexing both feet, and start to pull the strap by bending the elbows apart, bringing the left leg, if you can, a little closer to your chest. Now, if that feels a bit intense, you can bend your right knee to allow ease in your hamstring. Try to keep the left leg straight. Let's take a couple more deep breaths. Feel the sides of your neck still long as you relax the shoulders down your back. and then release the strap, put it aside for now. Go ahead and slide it towards the front of your mat because you might want to use it later. Bend both knees into your chest and start to rock either sideways or forward and back a few times, thereby massaging your back against the floor, but also building momentum so that you could eventually rise up to stand at the top of your mat in mountain pose. Tadasana. And once you are standing, separate your feet at least hips width apart, paralleling your second toes. And as you spread your toes on the ground, feel your weight firm down through the four corners of each foot, activating the muscles in your legs, drawing the navel in as you lift the heart. And as you release the arms down by your sides, turn your palms to face forward and lift up to your crown as you relax the shoulders down. Take a deep breath. Let's start with one half sun salutation, beginning to move to the breath. Inhale, raise the arms overhead, look up, and watch your palms touch, but relax the shoulders. Bend the knees as you exhale to fold, trying to create the feeling of a flat back. Press your hands on the ground or your legs, and inhale, lift your chest, lengthen your spine forward. Exhale, fold again. From down to your feet, inhale, sweep the arms and rise up, palms touch. Exhale, trace your thumbs down your center line. Engaging with your breath, feeling your body. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Let's move into sun salutation A. Then exhale, bow forward. Inhale, press your legs to the ground, lift the chest. Now stepping into plank, let's pause a moment here. So you could either set your knees on the ground, adding more support, or straighten the legs. Stack your shoulders right on top of your wrists and look in front of your hands on the floor, lengthening the sides of your neck. Spread your shoulder blades apart and slightly dome the space between them in your upper back, lifting the navel as you firm the heels back if the legs are straight. Now keeping this long line in your spine with an exhalation, glide way forward so that when you bend the elbows to hug your sides, they pass through a 90 degree bend before lowering. Then your wrists are right beside your floating ribs. Point your toes back and firm them on the ground. Keep the pelvis down as you roll the shoulder heads behind you, lifting the chest in cobra. Press down to your hands, tuck your toes. Lifting up, draw your pelvis back into downward facing dog. So first downward dog, if you want to take a moment to shift around, you might pedal your feet, swivel your hips side to side, softly shake and nod your head. So tune into your breathing. Let that be the anchor to be fully immersed here in your body and the moment to moment sensations. Letting this practice of mindfulness empower the feeling of inner strength, self trust. Now, bending both knees, lift your heels and hips high, look in front of your hands. At the end of your exhale, try to hold the breath out while walking or floating to the top of your mat into a forward fold. Then with your hands press to lift the chest halfway up. Exhale, fold in. Rooting down through your feet, inhale, sweep the arms and rise up, palms touch. Exhale, join your hands down to your heart. Now a more continuous flow, inhale, sweep the arms overhead. 
Exhale, bow forward. Inhale, lift your heart, lengthen the spine, step to plank. As you exhale, lowering forward, then down. Whether cobra or upward facing dog, from down to the tops of the feet as you lift the chest. Tuck the toes, press into the floor to lift the hips back. Downward facing dog. Let's take about three to five breaths here. Nurturing a sense of calm, balance, and steadiness in your breathing. We're gonna flow quite a bit in the beginning, trying to practice the qualities that promote a state of flow. That last tool that was listed in building resilience. Part of is actually doing something that's not completely easy, but even somewhat challenging, allowing you to play a bit with your edge with a sense of engagement and inspiration. So what inspires you today to move your body? With bent knees, look in front of your hands. At the end of your exhale, lightly land at the top of your mat. Inhale, lengthen forward. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise tall, watch your palms touch. Exhale, bring it back to your heart. Again, inhale, sweep the space around you. Exhale, hinge from your hips. Inhale, lift your chest, lengthen forward, step or float back into your version of your vinyasa. Breathing into cobra or upward facing dog and breathing out to downward facing. Three to five breaths there. Now, as we get into this repetition, allow the mind to feel a sense of ease, and trust that your body follows the breath as you focus more and more on the breathing, the quality of your breathing. With bent knees, look ahead of your hands. At the end of your exhale, lightly land at the top. Inhale, lengthen forward. Exhale, fold. Rooting down, inhale, rise up, palms meet. Exhale, together at your heart. We're going for two more rounds. Fully in it. Inhale, raise the arms. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift, step, or lightly float into four limb staff or chaturanga. Inhale, cobra or upward. Exhale, downward facing dog. Three to five breaths. We've got one more round, so take that one at your own pace and we'll meet. going for one more Surya Namaskar A. Just listening to the flow of your own breath. Taking a few breaths in downward dog. Now feel perhaps a little warmer in certain joints in your body. Let's open them up a bit. Spread your fingers really wide and flat, index fingers facing forward, parallel to each other. Roll the triceps or outer upper arms towards the mat, spreading your shoulder blades wide across your upper back. Drop your skull, look towards your feet, and as you relax your neck, lift the shoulders away from it. Lift your hips high from the belly towards your spine while pressing the fronts of your thigh bones back, shifting more weight towards the rear of your mat. Let's take a couple more breaths. Hugging your outer hips towards your midline, try to keep them balanced. As you inhale to raise the right leg behind you, flexing the foot, turn the right hip down. As you exhale, bend the right knee towards your nose, rounding the spine to lightly step the foot forward into a lunge. Stay on the ball of your back foot. With your feet hips width apart and parallel, root down through your feet and inhale, rise up into crescent pose. Bending the left knee, at least for this first one, allow your tailbone to anchor downward, lifting your frontal hip bone slightly as you engage your lower belly. 
Feel your right hip scissoring slightly back as your left hip slightly draws forward. Reaching up to your arms, relax your shoulders and take another inhale. Join your hands at your heart, spin the back heel to the earth and slide your right foot to the left to align your right heel to intersect the arch of your left foot in warrior two. As you turn your chest to face the left wall, open the arms. Soften your gaze, just past your right hand and relax the shoulders. Feel the turn out of your right leg at the hip as you bend your right knee just over the ankle, firming the outside edge of the left foot into the ground while firming the top of your left thigh bone back. Take another breath here. Keeping the bend in your right knee, flip your right palm to face up and sweep it overhead towards the rear of your mat in peaceful warrior, a side bend, landing your left hand gently on your left leg. Feel that your right knee continues to point forward rather than buckling in to the left. Take another inhale. As you exhale, lower your two hands to frame your right foot and step to plank, lowering through your version of vinyasa, which could be cat-cow as well, on hands and knees. We'll meet in downward facing dog. Downward dog, feel rooted through your fingers spread, lifted in the shoulders and hips. Inhale, raise the left leg and square your hips. Exhale, bend the left knee slowly towards your nose, engaging the belly to softly land the foot forward in a high lunge. Separating your feet, hips width parallel, ground through your feet and rise up, crescent pose. Now use the bend in your right knee again to orient your pelvis more upright as the tailbone descends. Slightly lift the frontal hip bones towards the bottom of your front ribs. Directing both hips to face forward, hug them in towards the midline and feel the steadiness at your center. Raising your arms, standing tall, relax the shoulders. Take another inhale and crescent. Then join your hands at your heart, spin the right heel down and slide your left foot a few inches to the right, aligning the left heel to intersect the arch of your right foot. Turn your chest to face the right wall and open your arms. Virabhadrasana two. How's your breathing? As you set your gaze ahead of your left hand, feel your left leg turn out at the hip, bending the front knee just over the ankle, firming your outer right foot into the ground as you press the front top of your right thigh bone back. Take another cycle of breath. Flip your left palm to face up. Sweep the left arm overhead towards the back of your mat, gently landing the right hand on your right leg in peaceful warrior. Feeling that length in the left side of your torso. Keep your left knee facing forward and take another inhale. Then exhale, lower your two hands to the ground and step to plank. Either flow through your own vinyasa of choice or step straight back into downward facing dog. We'll be there for a few cycles of breath. So we're entering another flow. It's the sequence or route that you just move through. And in this practice of marrying your movement to your breath, let the repetition lend itself to a sense of ease and even a flow state in your mind. Bend your knees, look in front of your hands. At the end of your exhale, land your feet to touch. Inhale, lengthen the chest forward. Exhale, fold. We're gonna add a chair pose here, so bend your knees to touch, sink your weight towards your heels. Inhale, raise the arms and chair. Press down to your feet and exhale, rise up. So beginning and ending in chair, let's take a couple rounds of the sequence. Focus on the qualities in your breath. Bend your knees, inhale, chair. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, lengthen halfway. Step or flow back. Exhale to lower into your vinyasa. You could also skip the vinyasa. 
back to downward facing dog. Inhale, raise the right leg. Exhale, slowly step it forward to a high lunge. Inhale, rise into crescent pose. Turn to your left. Exhale, open up to warrior two. Flip the right palm, inhale, sweep into peaceful warrior. Exhale, lower your hands and into your vinyasa. Or straight to downward dog. Attention on your breath, inhale, raise your left leg. Exhale, slowly step it forward to a high lunge. Inhale, rise into crescent pose. To your right, exhale, open up, warrior two. Flip the left palm, inhale, peaceful warrior. Lower your hands, exhale, lower to flow, or straight to downward dog. Breathing in deeply, breathing out slowly. Preparing for the last round, bend your knees, look forward. The bottom of the breath lightly land at the top. Feet touch, inhale, lengthen halfway. Exhale, fold. Knees touch, inhale, sit low in chair. Exhale to rise up, so even in the heat of it. Here we go, inhale chair, steady calm breaths. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, lengthen halfway, step or float back to lower. Vinyasa or straight to downward dog. From downward facing, inhale, raise your right leg. Exhale, step it forward to a high lunge. Inhale, rise into crescent. To your left, exhale, warrior two. Flip the right palm, inhale, peaceful warrior. All the way to the earth, exhale, vinyasa. Inhale. Exhale, downward dog. Second side, inhale, raise the left leg. Exhale, step it forward to a high lunge. Inhale, rise to crescent. To the right, exhale, warrior two. Flip the left palm, inhale, peaceful warrior. All the way down, breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Downward dog. If you feel that your breath is becoming choppy, you could bring your knees to the floor and take rest in child's pose as well, anytime. And even in this perhaps accelerated heartbeat or even breath rhythm, finding a sense of strength in your aliveness. From downward facing dog, bend your knees, look forward. Bottom of the exhale, lightly land your feet to touch at the top. Inhale, lengthen halfway. Exhale to fold. Bend your knees to touch. Inhale, sink your hips in chair. And very slowly begin to lower your pelvis to the floor. Preparing for boat pose, sit up tall. Bring your feet to touch, knees to touch. And either point or flex your feet as you lift them off the ground. You could hold on to your legs, you can place your hands on the floor or not use your hands. But think of drawing your lower belly towards your back and lifting it towards your heart as you relax the shoulders. Breathe in, exhale five. Focus on the quality of your breath you wanna feel, inhale. Exhale four. Feeling your own inner strength, inhale. Exhale, three. Breathe in. Exhale, two. One more breath. Exhale, gently step your feet on the mat, hips width apart and parallel, and place your hands behind your pelvis, shoulders width apart. Now turn your fingertips to face your feet. We're gonna prepare for an inverted tabletop pose. Pressing the feet down, contracting the backs of your 
thighs, your hamstrings, and lifting the pelvis so that your knees stack above your heels and your shoulders stack above your wrists. Now stretching your thighs forward, draw the shoulder blades down your back, tilting your gaze up. Take at least two more breaths, maybe longer before you lower your pelvis to the floor. As you hold this inverted tabletop, lengthen your tailbone towards the space between your knees. You're actively lengthening the thighs forward. And then when you come down, gently circle your hands at your wrists. Maybe roll out the shoulders, deep breaths. All right, one more round of boat. We're gonna change it up, add a new spice to it. So bring your feet to touch, knees to touch, hands wherever you like. Think of zippering the navel in and up. Tilt back just enough to lift your legs. Maybe extend the arms. Inhale, lower halfway down. Now you could have your hands on the ground for more support here. Exhale, hold. Stay here in this half boat as you breathe in. Exhale, lift up. Let's try two more. Inhale here. Exhale, lower halfway. Stay here as you breathe in. Exhale, lift. Inhale here in boats. Exhale, lower to half boat. Hold in half boat, breathe in. Exhale, lift. Last round, inhale and boat. Exhale, halfway down. Hold here. Exhale, lift. Then set your feet on the floor, hips width, parallel. <sighs> Let's place the hands behind your pelvis and this time turn the fingertips to face away from your feet for one more round. Now, either the same inverted tabletop with knees bend, or if you want to go a little further, you could straighten the legs in Purzvottanasana, it's basically an inverted plank pose. If you're straightening the legs, try to keep your feet parallel and move towards pressing the soles of your feet flat on the ground. Same thing with contracting your hamstrings and lifting your pelvis, drawing your thigh bones forward, your tailbone forward towards the space between the knees, drawing the shoulder blades down the back, creating space in the neck. Take at least three breaths, maybe longer, before lowering the pelvis again to sit. Feel the power behind your legs. And when you come down to sit, bend your knees, catch hold of the backs of your thighs, and start to rock forward and back a few times, up and down the length of your spine. We'll meet standing up, grabbing your strap on your way there. So with your strap in hand, step at the top of your mat with your feet hips width apart, <clears throat> turning both hips to face forward. Slide your left foot back about two thirds as far as you stood in a lunge. So a little shorter stance where you can keep both feet entirely on the floor, both legs straight, both hips facing forward. Then with your left hand holding the strap, raise your left arm up so the strap is hanging behind you. Use the right hand to rotate the left outer upper arm to face forward a bit as you bring the left elbow towards the center behind your head. Press the left shoulder blade down. Then reach the right hand underneath behind you to grab the other end of the strap and walk your hands as close together as you can. If you're able to clasp your fingers, you could drop the strap here. Then relax both shoulders down. Spread your toes. Firming down to your feet, engage the fronts of your thighs, engage the belly, and breathe in to lift your chest. Breathe out and begin to lengthen your spine forward, hinging towards your inner right shin. Breathe in as you pause and scissor the right hip slightly back while stretching the spine forward. Breathe out as you fold, maybe a little deeper while firming the belly against the spine. Feel the natural space between your chin and chest that you're maintaining in order to clear the passageway for your breath to continue to easily flow. Let's take two more breaths in pyramid pose. Parjvatanasana. Now firming the legs, firming the belly, breathe in to lengthen the spine halfway so you're parallel to the floor. Lower the left hand either onto your right shin, the ground inside of your right foot, or outside the right side of your right foot, which adds more challenge to balancing. 
Use the right thumb to hook the right outer hip crease and tack it back while stretching the top of your head forward towards the midline of your, your mat. Then exhale to twist, turning the rib cage so your chest faces the right wall, raising the right arm, ground both feet, energize both legs, especially your back leg, and continue to lengthen your spine from your pelvis as you inhale. Drawing the shoulders back, feel the length in your neck while deepening the twist. Feel how your wrists and shoulders stack in one line. Let's take a couple last breaths here in revolved triangle pose, Paripa Trigonasana. Now look down at your right foot. Plant your two hands just in front of it. <clears throat> Bend your right knee. Raise the left leg straight behind you, flexing the left foot. Turn the left outer hip down. Square your hips. Lengthen the spine forward. Breathe in. And as you exhale, bend both knees and cross the left leg behind the right leg as if you're about to sit down for a spinal twist, but not. This is called Shiva squat. Inhale, return to that modified warrior three. Straighten the left leg back. Lengthen the spine forward. And let's try two more rounds. Exhale, cross the left leg behind. Bend both knees. Shiva squat. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, Shiva squat. This time, inhale, lengthen. Look forward. Find some balance in warrior three. Maybe raising the hands off the floor. Maybe joining the hands at your heart. Turning both hips to face the ground. Chest forward. Lower your two hands and step the left foot. Hips distance from the right foot to fold. Bend your knees a lot. Grab your strap. And inhale to roll your spine slowly upright. One vertebra at a time. From here, slide your right foot back two thirds as far as you stood in the lunge so that both legs are straight, both heels are grounded, both hips are facing forward. Now holding the strap from your right hand, dangle it behind you and use your left hand to help rotate your right tricep forward, bringing the right elbow behind the center of your head. Then reach the left hand behind you underneath to grab the other end of the strap, walking your hands as close together as you can, maybe they clasp. As you energize your legs, grounding both feet, engage your belly. Breathe in to lift your chest, soften the shoulders down. Breathe out, start to hinge forward from your hips. Pausing as you inhale to square the hips, maybe needing to tacking the left hip back a bit while stretching the spine forward. And as you exhale, firming the belly towards the back while opening the chest as you fold. Notice the open space at your throat as well inviting your breath in and out for about three more breaths here in pyramid pose repeat the parshvottanasana Now look forward of your left foot and inhale, lengthen your spine parallel to the floor. Place your right hand either on your left shin, on the ground inside of your right foot, or if you want more challenge, place it on the left side of your left foot. Use your left thumb to hook the outer crease of your left hip and tack it back while lengthening the top of your head forward down the center line of your mat. Breathe in. Ground both feet and exhale. Turn your chest slowly to face the left wall. Spinal twist. Breathe in, ground the feet, energize the legs, and lengthen the spine. Breathe out, keep twisting, raise the left arm up, draw the shoulders away from the neck. About three more breaths here, and revolved triangle pose, Harita Trikanasana. Feel your shoulders and wrists stack in one line, yet your two hips stable, like you could balance a book across your lower back. Now look just ahead of your left toes and place your fingertips forward on the ground. Lean forward to lift the right leg parallel to the floor, flexing the right foot. Feel your two hips balance as you lengthen the chest forward. Inhale, Shiva squat, exhale, bend the right knee and cross it behind the left leg, bending both knees like you're about to sit, but not. Inhale, re-lengthen, 
modified warrior three. Two more rounds. Exhale, cross the right knee behind. Shiva squat. One more. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale into the squat. This time, inhale, lengthen, and stay for a few breaths in warrior three. Whether you keep both hands down or lift a finger or both hands, turning the right hip towards the ground, flex the right foot and lengthen the chest forward. Deep breaths. When you're ready, set your two hands down and step the right foot next to the left in a forward fold. Bend both knees again, drop the head, and with an inhale, slowly roll your spine upright. Now raising your arms overhead when you come to stand, hook your thumbs like an eagle shape and coil your chest up while stretching the tailbone downward. So continue to lengthen the lower back while arching right under the shoulder blades to create a back bend. Soften the shoulders away from the neck. Feel the expansion of your chest for one more inhale. And exhale to fold forward. Inhale, lengthen halfway. Step back to plank. Pause in plank. Now look down at your wrist. And without seesawing, your two hips, try to keep them stable like you're balancing something delicate across your lower back, lower into forearm plank. Replacing your wrists with your elbows, either parallel your forearms or interlace the fingers, extend your chest forward towards your thumbs. Draw the shoulder blades back, breathe. Lift the lower belly, firm the heels back, feel the fronts of your thighs engage. Inhale. Exhale, three. Focus on the quality of your breath. Inhale. Exhale, two. Can you feel the length from the top of your head, tailbone to heels? Breathe in, like mountain pose. Exhale, slowly lower your knees, then lower your pelvis into Sphinx pose, pointing the toes back. Take a few breaths here, softening the shoulders down, relaxing your face, your jaw, your tongue. Slide your knees as close together as you can. Now take your strap again. And bending your right knee. See if you can lasso the top of your right foot with that strap. So you can hold the strap with two hands, your palms facing each other. Now, if that's not possible right now, just bend your right knee and imagine you're holding the strap. So extend the arms back with the palms facing each other. With your knees no wider apart than hips width, ground your pubic bone and coiling your chest up, kick both legs towards straight. So keeping that right knee bent, if you're not holding the strap, you might try to hold onto your right ankle or the top of your right foot with one or both hands. If possible, both hands. So press your pubic bone down, Lift the heart up. Notice that you're not cranking the neck. You're looking slightly down. Let's take one more deep breath. And exhale, release the leg. Lower your ear, one ear towards the ground. And take a few deep breaths. Feel your breathing deepen. And soften. All right, let's take the strap. Bring your knees as close together as you can to begin. Then bend your left knee. See if you can lasso the top of your left foot with that strap. Holding the strap with both hands or imagining as if you are holding the strap, just still reach the arms back and bend the left knee. Press your pubic bone against the ground and then kick the legs towards straight as you coil the chest up. Slide the shoulder blades down your back. Now breathe. the strength of your own body to whatever degree you're attempting this posture you're here you've shown up let it go press the opposite ear towards the ground and take a few deep breaths I'd like to offer for the last back bend to bend both knees and catch both outer feet with your hands for a regular bow 
But if you prefer, you could roll onto your back and take bridge pose or upward facing dogs. Take your last choice for a back bend, a heart opener, opening the fronts of the shoulders a little bit more. And in any of these back bends, be sure to keep your knees hips width apart, not any wider. Think of elongating the tailbone towards the space between your knees and supportive lengthening your lower back. Focus on the back bending just under your shoulder blades while lengthening the back of your neck, expanding your chest. And when you decide you're done, whether you're on your belly or on your back, lower to rest for a few deep breaths. You might like to loosen the lower back by bending your knees and just letting the shins both fall to the right and to the left a few times. It might be a great time for lion's breath or big loud sigh or fluttering the lips. <sighs> letting some heat out by exhaling deeply through the mouth. Start to make your way into child's pose. Bringing the feet to touch and separating the knees as widely apart as needed in order to lower the pelvis down to your feet while stretching the arms forward to offer deep stretch into the lower back. Mindful of creating space in your neck by drawing the shoulder blades down your back. Breathe in, breathe out, rebalancing your back. And from child's pose, rock forward onto all fours, hands and knees as we prepare for a single pigeon opening the hips. If you prefer to do this lying on your back, also called thread the needle, start with your right ankle over the left thigh. Otherwise, slide your right shin forward Slide the left leg straight behind and tuck the left toes. Place your hands alongside your hips for a moment and lift your pelvis off the floor to scissor your right hip back and your left hip forward enough so both hips are balanced. Then if you find a gap between your right glute and the floor, you can place something in that gap, pillow or folded blanket. And then lift the chest up. You could stay upright. You could reach for your left inner ankle or outer ankle or foot, offering your left quadricep and flexor stretch. Or you could fold forward. And if you are folding forward, you could offer a stretch across the upper back with the other thread the needle. In doing so, you walk the right fingertips towards the upper right corner of your mat. Then slide your left arm, palm face up, underneath your right bent elbow to rest the left side of your head on the ground or on a prop. It helps to flare the right elbow upwards towards the sky so you can relax the shoulders away from your neck. Now watch the clock here for one more minute as you continue to steady your attention on your breath. Be observant to any subtle shifts any unraveling in the body, any change in sensation. After this last breath, start to make your way back to all fours. But if you're lying on your back, just stay on your back and maybe circle the legs, open and close before you switch sides. If you're on hands and knees, you might even like to shake out the right leg behind you for a moment. Maybe lift it up higher than your hips to encourage blood flow into the hips. 
as you're ready, from hands and knees, slide your left calf across your mat in front of your pelvis. Straighten your right leg behind you and tuck the right toes, placing your hands alongside your hips for a moment. From there, lift your pelvis off the floor to scissor your left hip back, your right hip forward, aligning your hips to face forward evenly, maybe placing a prop under your left glute if needed. Then from here, you might catch hold of your right ankle with your right hand, offering your quadricep and hip flexor stretch, as well as the inner shoulder. You might fold forward to rest. You might add a twist if you're folding. By this time, crawling the left fingertips towards the upper left corner of your mat and sliding the right arm, palm face up underneath your left bent elbow, resting the right side of your head all the way down. Use a prop if you need. Feel the cycles of your breath, any changing sensations in your body and even noticing the thoughts as they pass, as they linger. Stepping back for a wider perspective, being the consciousness that is you observing your physical being. You got just about half a minute left. the end of this breath start to make your way to sitting down if you need to do some movement before you get there like coming back to all fours and shaking the left leg out do what you need as you make your way to sitting when you do arrive sitting straighten the legs in front of you and you may like to grab the strap again for this forward fold of Paschimottanasana you are using the strap, wrap it around the balls of your feet and flex your feet against it. Separate your feet hips width, roll the shoulders back and down, lifting your chest. Open your heart space as you lengthen your spine. Then grounding your pelvis, hinge from your hips slowly as you breathe out, pausing when you breathe in to feel the ground as you lengthen the spine from the pelvis. Directing more attention inward, you might let your eyelids become heavier, maybe closing them like curtains. Seeing the movie inside rather than the movie outside. Then from your heart, breathe in to lift. Slowly lower onto your back. Now take one last minute for any last posture you want to do lying on your back. If you want to slide up against the wall and lift your legs up it to rest, feel free to do that. If you want to come into happy baby or shoulder stand, any last movement or pose to help you cool down and fully unwind towards Shavasana. and guide your body down to rest in a position of ease and stillness. Once there with eyes closed, feel your breath find ease and natural flow. Bringing importance to rest as we stay here for a few minutes.
starting with gentle movements, begin to wake up your body. Turning the head. Eventually draw your knees into your chest. Turning over to your right side, pause for a moment to just feel your presence. And when you're ready, press into the ground to rise, lifting your body into a comfortable, tall seat. Let's pause for a brief two minutes of sitting with ourselves, being an observer of our own inner space. Closing your eyes, or in some way directing your attention inward. Allow your body to breathe naturally. trust in the strength and resilience of your body. Taking care of itself as you observe it here. Aware of your breath. Feel the trust in your own power to choose to listen inward, to honor yourself in this practice. palms to meet at the heart, bowing in to close our practice. With one chant of Om, take a deep breath. to the light in you. Namaste.